New England may not be the largest region in America, but it's a culturally and economically important region. Boston is an intellectual capital, and New England was the industrial birthplace of America. And so it's an interesting question. What if New England seceded in the War of 1812? What would borders be like? What would culture be like? That is the question of this alternate history. During the Napoleonic Wars in our timeline, the United States wanted to remain neutral, and so forbade trade with both Britain and France. This greatly irked the East Coast urban, especially New England interests who made their lives work through trade, especially with Europe. The New Englanders had a strong trade connection with Britain, and so when the war was declared against Britain in 1812, the New Englanders burnt with anger. As it looked like America was losing the war, many New Englanders felt they needed to jump off the dying ship and leave the Union. The reason New England never seceded in our timeline is simply that the majority of the population wanted to stay in the Union. Only a minority were majorly affected by the trade legislation against Britain, and people still felt passionately about remaining in the Union and the American project from the Revolution. The New England secessionists had the Hartford Convention to decide whether or not to secede. In our timeline, they decided not to, not in small part because the war had ended and the Americans beat the British at the Battle of New Orleans. I could make this timeline happen by having the British win the Battle of New Orleans, but I won't. I've made a What If the British Win the Battle of New Orleans timeline already, the link to which is in the description if you're interested, and it's one of my longest and most epic of my timelines. For example, it ends in the 1950s with the United States controlling most of North America in a cold war against the Kaiser's Germany. If I had the British win the Battle of New Orleans to have this timeline start, this timeline would be more What If the British Win the Battle of New Orleans than it would be What If New England seceded in the War of 1812. I'm going to start this timeline by having a great New England secessionist leader be born, who's able to rally the majority of the population in rebellion against the government, and that's the only way I can see this timeline working. In this timeline, after the fall of Washington to the British, New England thinks the Union is dying and so rebels. The British, wanting to weaken the American Republic, would sponsor the New England rebels, sending troops and money. For the sake of this timeline, let's say that the Americans are too busy in the Chesapeake, Ontario, and Creek fronts, and so can't mount an effective offensive against the New Englanders, and the British defenses are great enough that New England becomes independent. New England, if it seceded, would quickly become a British puppet. The rebellion had showed that the New England economy was dependent on British trade, and so they would try at all costs to maintain trading relations with Britain. They would be seen by other Americans as worse than Judas, so they could not expect military protection or an alliance with their neighbor to the south. They would ally with Britain to protect themselves against the threat of reconquest by the rest of America. In this timeline, New England would probably become a commonwealth nation like Canada or Australia or something very close to it. The New England diaspora was when New Englanders immigrated west to the upper Midwest. In our timeline, they generally assimilated into the mid-Atlantic, midwestern culture of the other pioneers. In this timeline, it would probably not be very different. New Englanders would need more land, and the Midwest would supply lots of it. New Englanders are physically indistinguishable from Pennsylvanians or New Yorkers, and so could easily blend in. And with border controls being a joke, New Englanders would still move west. In the United States, the South had become dominant politically in the Senate, and more so in the House of Representatives, without New England to balance the North out. The first manifestation we would see of this would be during the Mexican-American War. In our timeline, the Southerners wanted to annex more of northern Mexico, to make more space for slave states. In our timeline, the North blocked them. But in this timeline, the U.S. would annex what in our timeline is northern Mexico. I often see in forums around this topic people saying the United States would be much weaker industrially without New England. This is a very New England-centric viewpoint. In our timeline, the Iron States, or Rust Belt States, who for our non-American audiences are the states in the belt in between Illinois and New York, had the most industry. In World War I, this region had approximately two-thirds the entire industry and economy of the entire continent combined. The abolitionist movement would be much weaker in the United States with New England out of the country. The heart of the abolitionist movement was New England, and so taking New England out of the Union would greatly weaken the abolitionist movement in the United States. Would there be a civil war as the North would try to secede from the South to exist in a slave-free nation? An almost absolute no. The civil war happened because the South would rather die sword in hand than end slavery. The South's entire cultural and economic system was based off slavery. The North, meanwhile, was not based off slavery, and so would not have risked terrible war and annihilation for the abolition of slavery. Also, if the North became an independent slave-free nation, it would have freed no slaves, because obviously, free states did not have slaves, and slavery would continue to exist in the South even if the North became independent. 
Slavery would probably end in World War I with the collapse of agricultural prices, leaving the planter classes broke and weak. This would allow the Iron States to pass anti-slavery legislation. The South wants to expand across the Caribbean and Central America to make more land for plantations. With the South dominant in this timeline, the United States would probably have conquered regions in Central America and the Caribbean. There's a concept that really should have a word for it in English. The concept that one's local issues matter less because the rest of the country will remain the same and balance out your local problems. This is an issue that would exist in New England with Irish immigration. When immigrants would enter New England from the potato famine, the New Englanders would treat them much more harshly than in our timeline. In our timeline, the idea of Irish immigrants pouring into Boston was not as scary as it would be in this timeline because the majority of the country were still Anglo-Protestants, and so the idea of the Irish taking over American culture would be ridiculous. Ridiculous. However, for the small nation of New England, the large amounts of Irish immigrants would appear as a threat that could wipe New English culture off the map. New Englanders would treat the Irish like crap, probably having them form an underclass and possibly passing anti-Catholic voting and property laws. Meanwhile, to the South in the United States, the South would want to have as many whites as possible to help keep down the blacks and settle the new territories in the West and Caribbean. In our timeline, the South was an anti-Catholic until after the Civil War, so this is possible. Heck, Americans would probably be nicer to the Irish than in our timeline, simply despite the New Englanders. Irish immigrants would gradually move south from New England and directly from Ireland to the United States. This is not dissimilar to Canada in our timeline, which was mean to Irish immigrants and so they moved south to the United States. The secession of New England would leave the Americans hating Britain for over a hundred years. Britain would be seen as the main instigator who led to the shameful secession of New England. Thus, when World War I would break out, the United States would not side with Britain during the war. Also, without Mexico likely existing, there would be no Zimmerman telegram, which is probably the most important variable in the U.S. entry into the war. Without the U.S. entry into the war, the Central Powers would win. You could either have them winning at Second Marne without the American support and seizing Paris, or if you don't believe the U.S. role in the Marne was decisive, you could have the French army collapsing in the mutinies without the news of American entry into the war, bolstering morale so the French army would not collapse. Either way, the Central Powers would have won. If the Germans had won World War I, a lot of things would have happened. I have an entire video on it. I would normally briefly summarize what would happen in a humorous way in this video, but that timeline perfectly fits into this one, since that video does not deal with America a lot. Honestly, if you want to see the end of this video, basically watch that video, the link to which is in the description. The major difference would be that after the Allies would lose World War II, New England would fall under the U.S. sphere of influence alongside the other Anglosphere nations. Culturally, the United States would be a very different nation. In our timeline, the Rust Belt in California basically called the shots culturally and economically. However, in this timeline, they would have to compete with the South on both levels. The United States would be a nation split in two between North and South, with completely different cultural values and economies. Without New England, what would become the most liberal part of America would vanish, and America would be a much more conservative country. With a longer slavery, segregation would take much longer to end if it ever did. Would New England be the socialist left-wing state that it would be in our timeline if it gained independence now? Probably not. What I've found is that almost all socialist or far-left nations are ethnically homogenous. The New Englanders would have to deal with a large second-class Irish population in the cities who they would have political battles on how to deal with. However, they would be more left-wing than the rest of the United States without the extremely conservative South with a fairly collectivist culture which lends itself to being left-wing. What if I'll test? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please comment or subscribe. And please stay tuned for my next video, my second Christmas special.